What is going on guys, DBG here, and today we are doing another tier list, lads. We're gonna be doing a tier list, for the best power forwards in my team. So, these are all the players we have. Some of these guys you see being used as center, some of these guys you see being used as small forward, but they're all primary power forwards, so this is where they are going to be. Before we get on to if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We are trying to hit 280,000 subscribers by the end of the month. And right now, we are a little bit under. We're like 2.8 thousand away. So it's going to be really, really close. So if you guys are new to the channel and enjoy this content, it would be great if you hit that subscribe button. So first up, we got Batum. I'm going A tier for Nick Batum. I'm way, way higher on Nick Batum than most people. Like, the guy is an Evo card. Um... And his Evo gives him like half bullet and stuff. So he does get some nice Hall of Fame. Or he does get a nice Hall of Fame badge off that Evo. But even without the Evo, he's just solid. There's no other real way to describe him. Like he's just a solid, solid player. Like his just overall movement is good. His defense is spectacular. The only real problem in my opinion with Nick Batum is just he's... He's a... When it comes to just creating, he doesn't... It's not that he's even bad at it, he's horrific at it. He doesn't create whatsoever. So for me, I think that's something that has to be taken into account. The fact that he's one of the worst players at creating their own shot. But in terms of like 3 and D players, I mean, you cannot go wrong with Nick Batum. From the day he was released now, you really couldn't go wrong. Roko, I'm going to Roko and B. I think there is a quite a big difference. I know people like Ty like to say there's very little difference between Roko and Nick Batum. I think there's a huge difference. Especially on next gen. If you're on current gen, maybe. Maybe Batum is a little bit close, or Roko is a little bit closer to Batum. But if you're playing on next, there's not even a... Like, they're not even the same stratosphere. Like, they're not even... Like, they shouldn't even be compared. But Roko's got a decent player build. He's 6'7", so unfortunately, this isn't the 6'9 Roko player build at 2K20. Like, 6'9 Robert Covington NBA 2K20, was he was that dude. But uh, since they made Roko 6'7 in 2K, he's not been quite as good. He still hasn't been bad. Don't get me wrong, like he hasn't been bad at all, and this card right here is pretty good, but like we won't have Roka will never be as good as he was in 2K20 again. And we got Scotty Barnes, and I'm putting Scotty Barnes in C tier. For me, Scotty Barnes is Robert Covington with a broken release. Like I know some people are gonna be like, oh I love Scotty Barnes, I shoot well with him. Then there's still no reason to use him. Freaking Hito is the same release. If you love Scotty Barnes, if you if you genuinely like, if you use Scotty Barnes because he's one of your favorite players in real life, more power to you. But if you're actually trying to argue that Scotty Barnes is a good card, then you also are probably arguing that Hito Turkoglu is one of the best players in the game. Because Hito Turkoglu is like a 6'10 Scotty Barnes with, without clamps, but he's got Interceptor, and he uh, can shoot from deep, and he's a better shooter. Like, Hito is a 6'10 better shooting Scotty Barnes, if you are actually making the argument that Scotty Barnes is good. He's not. He's C tier. Um, I'm going to go B tier for Aaron Gordon. I like Gordon. I think Gordon's so solid. Like, he was in my best team for 50k video. And there is no question about it. He belongs in that team. Like, I think solid is the best word to describe Aaron Gordon. He's just super solid. Like, he does nothing wrong on the floor. Like, he's not... In terms of just, like, overall play, he's not going to wow you. He's like a slightly worse version of Nick Batum. He's gonna shoot the ball really well from the corners, but from nobody else, from nowhere else. But I think B tier is the right spot for Aaron Gordon. Amare, E, uh, no, no, uh, E. Amare stinks. Amare absolutely stinks. I'm sorry for anyone who's uh, who completed that dom and still wants to believe that Amare's that Amare's good. I completed that domination. You got a whole bunch of tokens. I, but Amare that Amare is not a good player in my team. Sorry, I don't care what anyone says. Amari Stadamar is not good. So, uh, yeah, he's going into uh, he's going into E tier. Going into E tier right now. AKA, like I don't think AK quite makes the top five, but I mean, he might. He really might. There is a chance that AK. He's like twenty thousand MT. He's such good value. But two was down to like twenty k as well from like seventy k last week. So. I would not be surprised to see Andre Karolenko as one of my five in S, but for now I'm gonna put him in A. If I didn't have him to move him down, I might just go and move uh and move him up. So I'm gonna go D tier for Antoine Jameson. 
So Jameson's release isn't that bad. Like his release really isn't that bad. But he's not the best card in the world. And his stats are bad. Like, it's like imagine Batum, but like minus five in every stat. Like Jameson, I remember when Jameson came out, I was like, oh, he's solid. He can do everything at like a mediocre rate. And then I remember looking at Batum, or I remember looking at his stats like a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, his stats are worse than a Ruby's. He sucks. Anthony Davis, I don't like AD. I just want to put it out there. I do not like this Anthony Davis. But I'm like... Uh, I think, honestly... He's... He's A. Uh, like, I prefer Aaron Gordon. No, I prefer Aaron Gordon Anthony Davis. This AD was so good for his time. But if you're asking me right now, today, on the 6th, 7th of January? On the 5th of January? Jesus, I'm, I'm losing track of days right now. If you're asking me on the 5th of January 2022 who I'd rather have, I would rather take both of these guys, easily take both of these guys in um, in A tier over him. And also, I would 100 times out of 100 take uh, oh, no, not 100 times out of 100. I would probably take Aaron Gordon over him. That's a probably. He's going to go there. Blake I'm gonna go E for Blake Griffin. I think Blake is weak. I think he had his time where he was good enough. Like there was no guys that were gonna abuse him enough on the offensive end. Like the problem with Blake is that people have been just a, people haven't really been able to abuse him or people weren't able to abuse him, sorry, early on in the game. But as time has gone on, he's become way easier to abuse. And with him being easier to abuse, he's just, his, his offense or his lack of defense becomes more of a problem. Like when he came out, you could use him at center and he would just run around all the big centers because when you, he came out was when people were still using Shaq and people were still using um, Wilt as their centers. So it was very, very common to see like Blake just sprinting around centers and that being like a legitimately effective way of playing the game. But uh, it's not really an effective way of playing anymore. So he's going to go there. This Blake, however, a... This Blake might be the best card on this list right now. Like, he is one of my... He is honestly one of the most effective offensive players in the game. Like, he's he moves well. His handle's good. His defense isn't even that bad because the player build is so good. But um, other than that, he is... Yeah, I'm going to put him in A. He's the best player in A tier, though. Screw it. C tier. He's not that bad. I don't care what anyone says. He's not that bad. Bob Pettit in pick and pop situations can still cook. I, I just like Bob Pettit. I think I just like Bob Pettit more than 99.99% .99 of people. And uh, the number probably should be 100%. I think I might be the highest in the world right now on Bob Pettit. But I just like Bob Pettit. So he's going to go C tier. Uh, Boyan Worthless. Boyan, absolutely worthless right now. I mean, he's not even fast. What does he have, like 60-something speed? He wasn't terrible for week one. I just want to make that clear. He wasn't actually terrible for week one. But um, we're in like, what's it like? It's been more than three months since this game came out. So he's just not, he's just not it anymore. He's not that dude. Calvin Nat. I like Calvin Nat. I don't love Calvin Nat. He's been fine. Anytime I've used him, he's been fine. That's the only way I can put him. I know Splash uses him. Um, but again, Splash uses cards to just fit his playstyle. But I think not. Uh, the best way to uh, describe Nat, he is... He's like an undersized... He's an undersized, decent at everything power forward. But he's 6'6", six, six, so he's hard to... Wait, I Bosch D. Bosch kind of sucks. Bosch kind of, definitely kind of sucks. So, gonna go here with Bosch. Um, Weber... B, I think Weber was better than this Anthony Davis. I thought at the time, and I still kind of stand by it. 
It's not like I'm that I'm that convinced by saying that, but I think it's a close it's close enough that uh, it's not a ridiculous statement. But I do think Weber does more good than that idea Davis does good. So that is why we have Chris Weber. We have Chris Weber right here in um in B tier. Cliff Robinson, again, another player that's in my squad right now. I actually don't even mind the release. I don't care what anyone says. I don't uh I don't even think this release is terrible. I think he's, in general, a mediocre. He is a very, very mediocre um, shooter, but he's a fantastic defender. His defense is so good that it makes up for his mediocre shooting. But I know a lot of people, again, they say he's an awful shooter because of uh, the release. I don't mind it. I really don't mind it. So that's why I'm going to put him in A. Then we get Danny Manning uh, E. Maybe we're, you know what? Screw it. He's, Danny Manning is nowhere near as good as Blake or Amari. He's worthless. Danny Manning is right now in my team. He's absolutely worthless. He sucks. He stinks. David West C. David West is not, in my opinion, that much better than, um, than Bob Pettit. Like, his badges are a little better. His release is probably not as good as Bob Pettit's. The only difference really is, is that, like, like I don't miss a Bob Pettit. Um, Speed-wise, I think he's, like, a plus 10 on Pettit. I know Pettit's got 40 lateral, but he's better. Definitely not much. So I'm going to put these guys both into C tier. Put them both into C. Then we got Dennis Rodman. I don't like Dennis Rodman. I can't. I can't get a shot off with him. The problem isn't that Dennis Rodman can't shoot because he can't shoot. The problem is, is how hard it is to get a shot off with this guy. I get it, he's got half off rebound chase, but there's no reason to use him at this stage in the game. There's really no reason to use him. He's basically impossible to get a shot off with. I don't really see any reason why someone would use a, would use a Dennis Rodman in today's day and age. Like Even if you're saying, oh, he's a good rebounder, I mean, so is freaking Kuzma. But Kuzma's cheaper as well. Which is the craziest thing, like a Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma's diamond is cheaper than him. Uh, another worthless tier player is Dirk Nowitzki. It's gonna be Dirk Nowitzki. He really sucks. Dirk like really sucks. Then we've got this Dirk. Uh, this Dirk stinks, but he's not like I think putting him in worthless tier is uh, is oh like, nah, he's not worthless tier. He's not, but he sucks. Like, he really sucks. I just want to make that as point as clear as day. Dirk Nowitzki stinks. He is not a... He's not a person that I would ever, ever choose to use. He can shoot one leg of floaters, but that, or fadeaways, that's really it. Dolph. I'm going to put Dolph in S. I think Dolph is better than Cliff Robinson. Like, the difference is, like, Dolph is such a good shooter. There's nothing mediocre about Dolph. Like, his overall stats... They just, they're well-rounded. He's not spectacular at any one thing, but I mean, he can do everything. Like, Dolph is so nice. Like, Dolph is so, so nice in this game. Um, So he's coming in here at, uh, at S-tier, as our first S-tier inclusion. Then we got Demantis Sabonis, uh, C. I really don't rate Demantis. I don't think he's terrible. I don't think he's like an unusably bad card, but I think uh, C tier is probably the most fair spot for him. Considering he's, he's kind of undersized. His release is, I mean, his release isn't terrible. It's, it's like it's mediocre. Um, The problem is that unlike someone like Cliff Robinson, who's brilliant at a lot of things, like the Mantis of Onus's best like attribute is that he's a post playmaker. And I mean, like how effective are freaking post playmakers in 2K22? I mean, we're not or we're not all RCA. We're not all running our offense through Diamond Nikola Jokic, and this is not. We're not a, in early October. So um, he's going there. This Draymond Green D. This Draymond Green A. So I think Draymond is a really good player in 2K this year. I think his release is good. He's got to go behind the back this year. Um. I think just in terms of the overall game, he's pretty nice. Like, by no means is he 
a player you should build your team around. It doesn't matter which Draymond it is, you should not build your team around Draymond Green. But at the end of the day, um, he's a player that will move well, will hit wide open shots, and will play, in the case of the Amethyst, I, I don't know why anyone would be still using Amos Draymond Green at this stage, in the case of him, who will play adequate defense, but in the case of the uh, Diamond, will play exceptional defense. So yeah, um, that's where they're going. Like again, Diamond Draymond, still one of the best, one of the best um, power forwards in the game. Mobley, I'm going A tier for Mobley. Like, I have a love-hate relationship with this card, but like, there are days when I think that Evan Mobley is better than Kevin Garnett. And then there are days where I think Evan Mobley should never see the floor for me. Like, I, I do understand I got so angry in one gameplay that um, there is an entire thread made about me on a uh, on a My Team Facebook page getting angry because I uh, hyped up Evan Mobley and I got angry at him in one specific gameplay. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you guys can see like there are days where he is, he has made me angry than almost any other player. Problem is, it's not 68 strength. The problem with the 68 strength is that with 68 strength, if you guys don't know, the big, big problem with that is that he sometimes just gets bullied. And I don't mean bullied um, out of the way, like back down. Every player gets back down in this game. I mean, he sometimes gets bullied to the extent that he, um, he just gets pushed out of the way in weird situations. Like he won't go for a ball because he'll get shoved out of the way. But at the end of the day, he's still very good. Scotty Barnes, I don't understand why I have two Scotty Barnes here. Um, Dirk Nowitzki, I don't know why I have two Dirk Nowitzkis. Um, that's a bit of a weird one, why I have a Scotty Barnes on a Dirk Nowitzki already. But um, yeah, so we got Kuz. I think Kuzma, Kuzma's gonna go B, I like Kuzma. I really like Kuz, like, this was just a, uh, a personal list. You better believe Kyle Kuzma would be a little bit higher. He wouldn't be an exceptional mid higher. He would be just a little bit higher than he is right now. He'd be probably A tier. But I'm a big, big fan of the way Kyle Kuzma just moves, the way he shoots, the way he uh, he rebounds the ball. He's very good. Worthy. If if there was unlimited badge slots, Worthy would be S. He's missing like all the key badges. Missing so many shooting ones, missing the important defensive ones, missing quick first step. He's got post spin technician on half. He play. He's very good on defense. He comes a half interceptor. Like Worthy's okay, but he just needs every half badge or every badge. And like normally, I'm like, oh, sometimes cards are missing a couple of badges. They're still going to be good. And it's like I do agree. I do agree. But like that's putting him off S tier because I know people that are hyped up Worthy so much, saying he's the best power forward in the game because he's of his build, base 22, and half a deceptor. But he's missing everything. Like, he is missing every half badge really that matters. Except for interceptor. And I know he's got half post spin technician, but like, look, it's not week one anymore. 2K have nerfed post spins. Like, you cannot post spin a big man anymore. Like, 2K have nerfed the Dream Shake post spin. They've completely nerfed it. Boozer, A. I, re I think Boozer is spectacular. Like, I personally think the Boozer is better than more multiple players in A tier. I'm gonna have to move some of these guys off A because I'm not moving Boozer down. Maybe I'll move Boozer down. Like, I prefer Boozer to Blake, but it's not by a lot. And that's just a preference thing. Screw it, like, Boozer. Screw it, Mobley's not in my squad and Boozer's my starting center. So. And I think Mobley in A tier is just about justified. So I think Boozer in A tier is justified. I just love Carlos Boozer. I just love Carlos Boozer as my alarm went off and then my Alexa turned on. Great. Great, that's uh, it's not what you want to see in the middle of the video. <laughs> but um, Kevin Love. Now Kevin Love for me, like some people are like, oh, Kevin Love's just faster Boozer. I don't like Kevin, <sighs> Kevin Love's A as well. Kevin Love is just, he's just, it's preference shooting him versus Boozer. I much prefer Boozer. Like, I don't even think it's close for shooting wise. Like, I just like Boozer's release that much. But I mean, 
There's just so many guys in his A tier. Like Kevin Love's more than usable. He is more than usable in this game. He is just a player that I'm a I'm a fan of. But it's hard to separate these guys. Yanis, uh, get yourself in the worthless tier. Get yourself in the worthless tier. Diamond Yanis. Of all the like diamond players, I think Yanis might be the worst. Of all the like diamond current series players, they're all terrible. I'm gonna go A and S for the two Yanis cards. Um, I think the lack of... Hey, look, I don't like Giannis. I'm just going to put it out there right now. I don't like either of these Giannis cards. But I think that the 20, 75th anniversary one is so much better. Like, I don't even think there's a debate. Like, I genuinely, genuinely don't even think there's a debate. I think the seven, there are a few players where the 75th cards are way, way better. And he's one of them. Like, I think 75th Giannis... Is not even like I think the Mystic Gans is not even the same stratosphere as 75 Gans. So yeah. We're going to um go it like that for now. Jabari Parker, I mean, he kind of does what Blake does. He's a mobile power forward. He had a weird niche when he first came out as like the only like true point center. As in he was the only center that could really dribble the ball when he came out. And he could dribble the ball super, super well. Then we got Crowder. I'm going to put Crowder into... I'm put Crowder into C, honestly. I'm not going to put him higher than C, but I do think C tier is fine for Crowder. Because he's just... He's an overall solo card. He's going to play defense. He's going to hit jump shots. You're gonna, you know what you're going to get from Jay Crowder. This worthy, I'm sorry, you're not, you're almost in worthless tier, but I loved this card when the game first came out. Like, I was so freaking high on this card. So I'm not gonna, I need to make that as clear as possible. I thought he was the damn best. He had, he was just so effective, that goal post spin ignition. But at this stage, he is at, he's E tier. Again, in the A tier, is Jaron Jackson Jr., another player that I use and I prefer Boozer to him. But you could, if you want to argue Jaron Jackson Jr. is better than Boozer, I'm not going to argue you against you. There are so many like players here, whether it be Jackson Jr., Mobley, um, Boozer, Kevin Love, John Collins later. You can literally argue any of them over the other, and it's hard to argue either way. Jermaine O'Neal stinks. He can't shoot, can't really do anything. I mean, he can mash, that's about it. Jerry Lucas, you absolute garbage man. He's got like 30 live wings. And people, so I've heard some people being like, oh, he's just Bob Pettit. No, he's not. I used Bob Pettit for so long. I have tried to use Jerry Lucas. He is unusable. He is unusually bad. You can pull up the stats all you want. If you're reacting to this tie, you can pull up the stats all you want. But Jerry Lucas stinks. Terrible player builds. Feels clunky, whereas um, Pettit's not fast, but he feels, he feels like his speed's probably close to 75. Whereas um, Jerry Lucas feels like speed is 40. 35 lateral quickness, he sucks. And then John Collins going into that A tier bracket. He is because, again, I feel like John Collins, with the way he shoots, it's hard It's hard to not. Because he's got like, again, his speed is high 70s. And guys like John Collins and Carlos Boozer, like if their speed, their speed is 79, both of them as far as I'm aware, but if that speed, instead of saying 79, said 81, I could guarantee you people would uh, would be super high on them, even though it's irrelevant. Like 79 versus 81 speed is absolutely irrelevant. But I could guarantee you that if that said, just like a lot of people whose defense are in like the high 70s and everyone says they suck on defense uh, and guys in the low 80s are quote unquote passable on defense. Um, I think that with, with those guys, if they had speed even too higher, as long as it said 80, people wouldn't care. But uh, their stat, their speed stat being 79, people very much underrate them. Both of these guys have got half rebound chaser, which is a really good badge to have. And for me, I, again, Boozer replaced John Collins on my team. So, can't really say much about it. Isaac, I mean, Isaac's going high B tier. Isaac's good. He's not A tier anymore. For his prize, he's still pretty good. Like, he's still 3,000 MT. But like we saw it earlier, like I never, I wouldn't have thought that this early he was going to not make my like best team for under 50k. Like I, like Jonathan did not even make my team for it, which was kind of nuts. 
which was kind of nuts, but he's he's didn't he's B tier right now. Josh Smith, B tier. I still think Josh Smith is good. I don't care what anyone says. I still think he's good. I used him about three weeks ago, and um, for a while as my center, and he was really really nice. His defense is still more than possible at this stage. He's a little bit undersized as center. He's gonna get matched, but like. Look, if, if you're not playing a tall center, if you're playing somewhere in Kevin Garnett, he works fine. If you're playing against somebody running um, like Shaq or D-Rob, yeah, then you're gonna struggle. You're gonna struggle. But if you're just playing against a normal center and not a giant, and you're not playing someone who's pain mashing every possession, then yeah, he's a good, good player to use. Then we got Randall. Uh, he's, he's DRE, Randall's not very good. Randall's really not very good, so he's going to go there. Uh, I'm going to get E tier. For me, Jawan Howard is like worse Amari Stoudemire. I think maybe Amari is a tier too low. I think maybe Amari Stoudemire is a tier too low. We're going to move Amari Stoudemire up to D tier. This Kevin Durant. I mean, because he's Kevin Durant and he's got like KD release and shifty. I'm going to put KD in a little bit higher than I would have expected to. I'm going to put him in E tier. I am not a fan. Or I'm not a fan of any of these current cards, but he's not terrible. Like so most of these current cards are terrible. He's not brilliant, but he's by no means unusably bad. Kevin Garnett. Oh, I don't like it. Like I have a diamond contract with KD. He's probably like the second most used player in my entire squad. I don't like him. I have not liked the cards since the day I got him, but I still use him nonstop. Half Interceptor, he's inconsistent for me. I prefer him to Giannis, though. Oh, I'm going to go S, but I don't like... I Give me AK over him. I don't like him. Odom. Odom stinks. E tier. This Larry Bird. I mean, this Larry Bird C, he's actually not that bad. He's kind of slow, but his lateral is good. His defense is good. Can't dunk it, but he's going to go here. This Larry Bird, no-brainer, A tier. He's into that gigantic A tier of all these players. And like, I wish I could like separate some of them, but for me, I can't really. Every card here has flaws. Except for Batum, but he's not good enough at one particular thing. Every other card here has a, has a flaw. Mobley, it's his strength. Cliff, it's his jump shot. Boozer, it's his slight lack of speed. The exact same with John Collins. His speed's only 79. Draymond, his height. Blake, his defense. AK, his ability to create. Giannis shooting, but two mediocre at everything. Um, worthy lack of badges. Kevin Love defense is poor, and Jaron Jackson Jr. has a forty-five steal. They're all good. Two worthless in a row. Two worthless in a row here for um for these two guys. They both stink. Larry Mark and my God, lads. I don't understand, like, oh, I do understand why I put Larry Markin on this list. I got to make the numbers somehow. But Larry Markin stinks. Larry Markin really stinks, lads. His, um, his movement is bad. I mean, why am I going on about day one card and a current series card? They both, they both suck. Uh, worst, Miles Bridge is literally just worse Calvin Nat. He's not bad small forward, though. So I'm going to go, I'm going to put Miles Bridges in B. He's on the lower end of B, whereas Calvin Nat's on the higher end of B. Because if you guys don't know, Calvin Nat is a Miles Bridges clone. So 2K took all of uh, Calvin Nat's um, animations and gave him to Miles Bridges. Which is very, very kind of annoying. But, uh, yeah. Um, so obviously he is a clone. But again, they're both 6'6 six, six power forwards. They're both um, overall decent cards. But I think Nats is better. Um, I'm going to go for now. At this stage of the game for Pascal Siakam, I'm going to put him into E tier. But I don't actually... I didn't mind this Siakam. I really liked the Siakam when he first came out. It was in my day one team. Um, was a really good... For, in my opinion, Siakam was a good player for a number of weeks. He was a good player for a lot longer than people gave him credit for. Like the trio of Pascal Siakam, um, James Worthy, and a goal post in Inish and Darius Miles... Like, that trio was so free. Like, that trio won me, like, 80 games in a row of a TT Online in a row. That was an exaggeration. It was, like, 
69. It was 68 games. It was 60. Was it 68? Somewhere around that. But um, it was in the 60s anyway. But yeah, literally just posting with those guys was dopey. But uh, this day is E. Millsap. I, I don't. I think he's high C or low B. Like, I don't think he's Aaron Gordon good. I'm going to put him into C tier, even though I like him more than most people. Like, I much prefer Millsap to Scotty Barnes. Um, Paul Silas, A. Hoff Interceptor, Draymond release. Great behind the back. He's like Draymond, except he's a slightly worse shooter and playmaker, but he gets Hoff Interceptor, so... That's pretty much it. He's like, he is Draymond. Scotty behind the back. But he's actually, no, sorry. Paul Salas has got shifty. Paul Salas has got shifty. So, um, then we got Rick Barry. His, like, base 18 is a release that's growing on me. And I can't believe I was, I'm was i ever going to say this, but base 18 is a release that I don't hate. I don't actually hate base 18. I'm going to be honest. I don't hate the release. So, uh, yeah, he's going to go into this tier. And, okay, let's let's see what other players we have. Now we've got our another S tier player. We need to find out who the last S tier player is. Oh, I have the wrong Z I forgot to put in Zion. I knew I forgot somebody when I put in two Scotty Barnes. Um, Zion. I would, I would honestly put Opal Zion in B tier. Opal Zion Williamson's going into B tier. Um, he's not on the, he's not right here, unfortunately. He's probably gonna be in the thumbnail, but, uh, Opal Zion Williamson is going into B tier lads. This is the one time where if someone says, where is X player? And, uh, I tell you guys to reply with the B tier, you're not actually going to be lying. Opal Zion Williamson for me is B tier. Um, but neither Zion in D tier. I mean, I hate him, but is he that much worse than Dennis Robin? I don't think so. Abaka D tier. Abaka was so good for the first couple of weeks. He was probably the best token ward outside of Pink Diamonds for the first while. Abaka really was that dude. Kemp. Kemp's gonna go B. Kemp can really move. Kemp can really, really move. His for a big man, he comes up like fundamental. His ball handle's pretty good. He's got quick first step. He is a point center, and he was like a point center before point centers were really a thing in my team. So if you, I know people that swear by this card. I know people genuinely still to this day that uh, that swear by Sean Kemp. And if you do, fair enough, he's he's good. This Tim Duncan E. This Tim Duncan A. Um, worse Kevin Garnett. It's the best way to describe him. He is worse KG. But uh, I mean, he's not a bad player. He's not a bad player at all. It's just the release is iffy. He comes with half intercepted up. So there's a reason why guys like Splash use him in a competitive, he's better in a competitive setting than he is in a casual setting. He's not really gonna hit too many shots for you, but a lot the way a lot of people play nowadays, especially playing this game competitively, you don't even need to hit shots at a player. They're just going to, uh, there's people are just looking to play defense. Tom Chambers, worthless. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go worthless with Tom Chambers. I don't rate the guy. I don't rate him at all. Like, he's he's not bad. He's not bad stats wise. He just shoots with a chest pass. So yeah, this is my list. I'm happy with it. I'm happy. I need to find one more player for S tier though. So I don't like the other Giannis. It's between for me, Draymond. Paul Silas. I'm Blake. I think I'm gonna go Draymond. I think because I think I'm gonna be I'm close between Paul Silas and Draymond. But because you can no, you can no longer get Paul Silas, I think I'm just gonna go Dray. I think I'm gonna go Draymond Green. I think I'm gonna put in Draymond Green, lads. So anyway, yeah, that is pretty much it. That is the video. So what do you guys think? Do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? Let me know in the comment section. And please don't be don't be too angry about it. It's an opinion on a video game. Okay? So that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.